Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing uh, Red Bull's Red Bull Leipzig's Sihan, Kihan. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name, guys, so I do apologize. But he is a very, very good player. He's been around the scene for many, many years, and he's obviously awesome at the game. So, uh, again, I haven't really watched the tournaments that much, so I don't really know the play styles of, of people like Sihan. We're going to call him Sihan or Ki We're going to call him Kion. Yeah, we're just going to call him Kion. Uh, I never really seen him play personally. So this is definitely going to be another interesting videos. I haven't watched a lot of pro player gameplay because I just don't watch the tournaments in general. But um, I am down to analyze these games. So again, we try to find uh, the highest tiered player that they do come up against so that we can review those games and then basically take it from there. So right off the bat here, uh, Neymar on the billboard. So the team looks like that might be a Zebu actually. Let's see, is that a Zebu? I think this card, this card right here, is a Zebu. So right off the bat, he's got Prime Ronaldo right there. Is Prime Ronaldo? That's Ronaldo CR7. That is, I think that's a Zebu up top. Messi at the bottom. Yeah, that's Lionel Messi at the bottom. Let's see who else he has in the team here. Other teams that he has here, other players that he has here, Patrick Vieira and Hullet. Yeah, so Patrick Vieira and Hullet is usually the the meta for uh, pro players. You're going to see a lot of Patrick Vieira versus uh, uh, Patrick Vieira Hullet because Hullet is a good combination of being able to do everything with high medium work rates, and then uh, Patrick Vieira is single handedly the best medium high CDM in the game because he has everything you need for him to be an absolute god. His back four consists of Alexandro. Uh, Maldini, Rio Ferdinand, and Kyle Walker, possibly. So that's that's the typical uh, back four as well for pro players too. So just take that into account when reviewing these games. So right off the bat, you can tell that he's using a 4-2-3-1 as well. Again, the formation that most people use in this game. I'm surprised he actually goes for the aggressive touch here with Messi. It's actually ideal in a situation like this. So when Messi's making this run, because Messi doesn't really have a physical presence, it's not really worth pushing the ball forward. Uh, but what, what could have been done here is a nice little flick with the right stick. Just flick the right stick downwards or to the right side uh, just to give him a little bit of space to work with, right? Because that little commitment that he does there uh, without Messi having any physical presence is not ideal. He does right off the bat, you can tell he does have press after possession loss because look at what happens here. When he loses the ball, loses the ball right there. Boom, everybody pushes him. Should switch the play. Beautiful. Okay, so the defensive style that uh, Kihan uses is basically he aggressively pushes out with players because his players can compensate for that lack of space. But he is risking it a little bit because if people do end up exploring that space, it could be trouble for him, right? He's waiting for that run, yeah. It's good. He, he waited a little bit to see if Ronaldo would make this run right here. Ronaldo doesn't have good work rates. Uh, Prime Ronaldo has... Just gonna check this right now. So you can tell that that's a characteristic that he has when he was waiting for that run. Ronaldo didn't really do it. Uh, so Prime Ronaldo has uh, medium, medium work rates, and you can tell right here when he gets the ball here to a Zebu. Look at Ronaldo. It's an okay run, but he's kind of like holding it, and then he's not really like really gunning for that side, right? But he still waits for it, which is what he definitely should be doing, right? So it looks like he's also going to be the type of player that's going to be working his space in the middle. This is risky. His player could foul him here and give him a penalty. Kihan looks like he's going for the... Um, there is there is somewhat of an effective way to score in this game, and it's the driven shot near post time finish. And I think that's what he goes for here when he gets his ball on that angle. I think that just goes through his defender's foot right there, if I'm not mistaken. That does happen in this game. Not worth doing that. Okay, so right off the bat, you could tell that the, the balance for the teams. Pogba, Neymar. Ezebu is a lone striker. Interesting. Griezmann, Conte, Pogba. 
Mbappe. So this guy has like a good meta team, but it's not like, you know what I mean? Like, because he has like Mbappe, Griezmann. So Griezmann on the right, so he can hit those finesse shots on the inside as well. Um, Ezebio as a striker, a lone striker is interesting because Ezebio doesn't have physical presence. So you're kind of missing a certain game style when you don't have a good physical presence up there. So uh, his attacking tactics looks like it's also on either balanced or, or fast build-up play. Because once he gets into this position right here, maybe he does this to open up the space for himself. So he could be pressing LB and spamming the left stick to make his players make those runs. Because you'll see that they both make those runs right there. Oh, he can definitely work with the space now. That's the finesse shot. So his opponent does well there because he get uh, so Kihan gets into that position to do the finesse shot, and his his opponent does well to use the manual goalkeeping to push him off to the right side. Kihan probably notices that now that he's doing that with his goalkeeper. So I think the way he's going to approach his shots in the future are going to be different because you know it, there was that meme on Twitter where it's like it's like. when your opponent moves the goalkeeper to block your finesse shot. <laughs> so he's probably going to shoot differently now. Yeah, this guy has a good meta team. It's just not like a really good meta team. You know what I mean? Because he's got Lala, Conte. Conte Pogba is a very nice combo for two CDMs. That's not um, Hullet Vieira. Yeah, he's looking to get that that middle angle. Ooh, that would have been nice if he passed him. Would have definitely given props for that. Hold it, physical, physical, physical presence. Ooh, that's what Patrick Vieira and Hullet do for you, man, in that CDM area. That's just that reach that they have, you know? You could hit that one. You could hit that one. I like what I like what Kihan does here. This right here, very sick. Goes in, like nice little intricate dribbling with Messi, because that's what you're gonna get out of him, right? Cuts on the inside, nice little, nice little boost there, you know. Boom. Does this is the this is the half croquetta right here. This is what he does. Does a half croquetta. Look. Half croquetta. Very nice. Yeah, so you can see that he you can see that look, this is what he does. This is interesting. This is a play style that Kihan has, right? So look at how his players are moving. So when he overly commits his fullback, look at what his root hullet does. So he might actually have instructions to go and cover the wing when he overly commits with certain players. Because watch, when he uses Kyle Walker, he's like, okay, you know what? Kyle Walker is going to be my CDM now because look at what root hullet does when he commits with Kyle Walker. Hullet's like, oh, okay, you want to play CDM? I'm going to go play right back now. And that's what he does. And now Kyle Walker got the ball back. That's why when people don't use cover wings, it could be beneficial. It's it's not like you, you should only use cover center, right? If you play that play style of aggressive defending and people go occupy the spot, the spot that you leave, it's very effective. He tried to get a better finesse shot angle there. Oh, hold it, that physical. That's an easy goal. His opponent almost does really well here. Oh, unlucky that he doesn't go more downwards there. Again, I, I don't think goalie movement should be a thing in general. I think this should just be an easy goal in general. Like he has the he has the open space. You know what I mean? That one, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't like goalie movement. I, I think it's the most unnatural thing ever. Because the way his goalie moves, come on. No goalie in the world is going to be positioned like this. No goalie is going to do that. Look at this. You know what I mean? So his, his press after possession loss is what gets him the goal here. So watch. He's attacking, loses the ball right about here, press after possession loss, 
everyone pushes to the one area. Right? Three guys on one dude, makes a pass, scores the goal. Yeah, so he aggressively, he aggressively defends. I think he actually switches his tactics as he's playing. Yeah, he he might actually be switching his tactics as he's playing. From kickoff, he doesn't use presser after possession loss. He probably switches it to something else and then switches it afterwards. He's not going to commit to the middle because the guy's blocking. Now he will, yeah. I thought he scored that. I was like, wow. But they do go in from there. Yeah, definitely not using... Pre He's, he uses it? I think he switches between his tactics. Because they're definitely not on press after possession loss in regular play. Good defending. That deserves a block 100%. I love when manually defending gets rewarded. It's not It's not always a regular con uh, occurrence, so it's very nice that it actually worked there. Upwards. Ooh. So he does he does the half coqueta, but accelerates downwards right here. So you'll, you'll see right here. Half coqueta, accelerate downwards. So the way to do that, if I can put my controller on the screen for you guys here, is like this. So I'll put the controller for you guys. So it's not really that big. I'll put it bigger for you guys. So he basically does like this. Uh, I think it's, is it this? Is it only this? I can't remember. I haven't played FIFA in a while. Uh, the Coqueta is like holding this and then doing this. So that's what he does when he's facing upwards. He does this, but then he accelerates downwards, right? So he's like, he's holding this. He's, he's obviously aiming upwards, but he's holding this. He does this and then accelerates downwards. But let's go of the right stick. So... Aiming upwards, LB, half croqueta, accelerates downwards. Just going to make that smaller again for the stream whenever I do stream again. <laughs> uh, okay, YouTube video, bam. So just to, just to show what his Ronaldo does here. Half croqueta, accelerate downwards. The replay is so weird. It makes you think like the person scores. He's going for the near post. Near post near, near post finishes. That's what he's going for. Oh man, that's that's what you pay for right there. That's what you pay for right there. Look at that. Oh my god. Look at Patrick Vieira. Look at this guy. Whoop. Not even controlling him. What a god. Aggressive center back defending. Second man press. He's using second man press right there. Yeah, he's he's an aggressive defender. Watch what Nicholas does here, man. He knows he's going for that finesse shot. Watch. He gets that angle. That's a first time finesse and a half. But look at what he does with his goalkeeper here. Gets that angle, comes from the outside to the inside, booms. Little, little, little movement right there. Gets, gets that block for him. If his opponent touches the ball and then shoots it, it could end up being a goal. But it's very hard. It, it's not, it's not a type of game that should be a thing. Like, oh, I got that angle, then it's just, it's weird. He's gonna be working that angle. He, he, he lets his attackers go on, go inside the box to create that space. That's a, ooh, he goes for a driven shot there. Oh, you know why he goes for the shot there? So, so Kihan knows that this guy actually manually moves his goalkeeper. So he assumes that once he gets that angle with Messi's left foot, he thinks that his goalkeeper is going to move to the left side. So he does a regular shot to the right side, but obviously it gets blocked. You can see he's he's manually moving his goalie on the on the corners too, so that the guy can't use uh, near post uh, corners. Yeah, see here, in this area, he doesn't aggressively defend. There he does, because, dude, that, that physical, man. That's a first-time pass, yeah. He's going to wait for Messi to make that run, probably. Messi doesn't make a good run there. 
physical presence by Ronaldo. He'll be watching that run up top. Yeah. Probably going to utilize his fullback. Oh, it doesn't do it. Does a really good job, actually. Oh, that's a little bit lucky. Should be doing a skill move here, at least, because uh, he can score this. He could definitely score this from this angle. But he probably has to try to cut inside. Cut inside and then go for that near post shot, you know? Because Kihan is going to he's gonna predict the, the far post finesse. Really good defending there. Ronaldo's height definitely helps there. Height with the pace, physical presence. Pass it back to the CDM. Make that run in the middle, yeah. You never want to overly commit to the other side. You want to pass to your CDM. That's why stay back while attacking for your CDMs is so is so essential. So you can have that extra passing presence to give the ball off to. Yeah, that's the LB fake shot right there. Or L1 fake shot. Looking for that finesse shot angle. Gets it, but the goalie, he's the other, the opponent's moving his goalie. Because you can, you can score that from there. And that's a foul for God knows what. He's moving his goalie a little bit there. Takes everybody out the wall, which is kind of dangerous, to be honest. But he's he's probably really good at moving the goalkeeper. Which shouldn't be a thing. Once finesse shots is taken out. Because finesse shots is still in the game, it has to be a thing. But when it's out, get out of here. And defensive AI needs nerfing a little bit. Yeah, see, he moves his goalkeeper, man. His opponent's a good player. I think I think if he has a better team, like an equal team, and this could be a very balanced game. But I think that the physical presence difference between the squads and the pace and the certain stats that he doesn't have allow it doesn't allow him to do certain things. Because Ezebio being his striker instead of it being someone like Ronaldo. Uh, is not an ideal situation because Ezebio is small. So that those physical dudes will win those battles most of the times. First time pass, first time pass again. Probably going to pass to the fullback, utilize that space on the right side. Not... Mm, nope, you won't go for that. Middle pass. Ooh, even better pass, actually. I give full credit for that. Fullback pass. Yeah, so so I like Kihan's defending because he he aggressively defends. That's really good defending. I like that. I'm surprised he keeps Messi on the on the on the right side. I think he on the left side. I think he keeps him there because Kihan uses the driven shot, the near post driven shot meta. Well, it's not like a complete meta, but it's a very effective way to score. That's the angle. Oof. He didn't go for it there, though. Use a CDM. Overly aggressive. Has space to work with in the middle now because of the overly aggressive defending. Overly aggressive, uh, overly aggressive defending is very, very helpful. Again, lacks physical presence right there. Um, overly aggressive defending is very, very useful. But it's also very risk, uh, risky to do as well. Why pass? Downwards pass, upwards pass, upwards pass. Goes for the finesse shot. That's actually not that's a good that's a good angle for sure. Good defending there, but I just got unlucky. Gonna wait for the little gonna wait for some openings here. I think his Ronaldo is a lone Ronaldo. Oh, he has CR7 now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I I was like confused a little bit because I was like, oh wait, it's a different side now. Never mind. <laughs> it's the same teams. I was like, oh, he has Prime and R R9 and right now. It's like, no, he doesn't. Fake shots. Overly commits there with his fullback. He's going to look for that middle angle. Right there. Yep. Yeah. That's also a, a, a meta characteristic from Hullet. Uh He does the lift pass. Lift pass is, is very, very helpful. Because when a player overly commits, they commit with their foot outwards to the floor. Uh, it's not worth going for the uh, drag back there. Not with the defender on you like that. This is going to end 1-0. 
this is this is good FIFA in terms of predictions and stuff, but it's it, this is like very um, like kind of like generic. It's all about like he's gonna he's not gonna score that dude. His opponent, his opponent's goalie movement is 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 on another level. Look at this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. You know what? I give his opponent credit for going for the near post right there. Oh, yeah. Definitely give him credit there. The thing... Okay, my thing with manual goalkeeping, I think it should be removed once they fix finesse shots because I feel like... I feel like he really deserved to score this opportunity. You know what I mean? Like, the the way that he attacked... Look at this. He gets the ball back right here. He shouldn't... This guy should not be passing the ball like that. At all. Utilizes the space. Why pass upwards? I feel like that should just be a goal. You know what I'm saying? I don't... I think once you pass a person's defense after they screw up, I don't think they should be allowed to move. In those situations, I don't think a goalie should be able to, to be moved. I think it should just be a simple near post finesse or a driven shot across goal that's my personal opinion i think kihan deserves a goal here because i think the manual goalkeeper is just i give him credit for predicting that one though because if kihan goes for a cross goal he scores it right but it's just not something because defensive ai is already really effective it's not something that you have to you should have to worry about when you're attacking against someone you know I think he actually may have gone for the regular shot across goal, but because of his Zebu's angle, he wasn't able to hit it. Possibly. Hey, look at him moving his goalie. This guy knows how to move his goalie, bro. This guy he's playing against, he knows how to move his goalie. Uh, you won't go for the finesse there. You know, you know Kihan's got the predictions down there. You see how he's he's second guessing himself when he's attacking? That's it's easy for you to lose the ball like that because now you have so much things you have to look at, you know? In that situation, good. That's what it should be because finesse shots are annoying AF. But if it's a 1v1, that should just it shouldn't be the case, in my opinion. Once you get past the defensive AI man, I feel like it's just He made a poor pass. He exploited that open space. He should be scoring it. Finesse shot, so it's good that his goalie saved that. Physical presence with Pogba. Very nice. Having that height to win the ball. Good jumping, too, on Pogba. I'm For me personally, though, guys, like Kihan's a fantastic player. You could see the way he plays and everything. He's awesome, right? I just don't like this meta. This meta is is just... I don't, I don't like it. You know what I mean? When you're 1v1, there shouldn't be goalie movement. Because you got you already got past the person's defensive AI. I, I I I personally don't feel like goalie movement should be a thing. I think it's stupid. I think scoring the goal should be rewarded. Do you know what I'm saying? From breaking down someone's defense. Again, the goalie thing should be the last thing to worry about, in my opinion. I think it's a really, really stupid mechanic they added this year. It's good only right now because of the finesse shot meta. It's good only because of that. But if they remove the finesse shot meta. Make defensive AI less effective by a little bit, right? 1v1's more, more effective from good angles, right? Especially these ones. From good angles like this, especially Messi. Right there with Messi. If he does a driven shot across goal or a near post finesse and I conceded it after screwing up uh, his constant pressuring like that when I should be passing it back to the goalkeeper, that's a goal to concede where you're like, you know what? Okay, sure. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that he doesn't score that personally annoys me. You know what I mean? I just think I just think that you know when someone screws up like that, they shouldn't be allowed to use the goalie to 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 save them like that. I don't know. That's just a personal opinion. A goalie will never stand on that near post like that in real life. It just it wouldn't happen. If Messi were to finish that in real life, that would be a fantastic goal because no goalie in the world is saving that. But it would be a good goal because of the breakdown of the defense. You know. Because you can tell his opponent is second guessing him, second guessing himself. Because look, he gets in, 
And his he's moving the goalie a little bit, so he's like, oh, I don't know which shot to take. Which is good, because that's a finesse shot, angle shot, so it's good that he can't score that. In all fairness, his oppo his Kihan's opponent hasn't really been doing much to get past his defense in terms of breaking it down, but that's also because that physical presence that his team has is insane. Because this guy is a good player. You can tell he's sick, but this meta is just is just not ideal. Look. See how he's always looking for it? He's going to hold on possession of the ball now to waste time. Probably going to drop it on the floor. Yeah. Wait for someone to overly commit to him. Pass the ball. There it is. And the game's done.